This age of perpetual invention that we have inherited uh, took off in the late 19th century. And one of the most transformative of these inventions, I would argue, is electric light. If you're asked to name a great invention of the late 19th century, many would say the light bulb uh, is the greatest. And many would put it on a short list of the greatest inventions ever. We actually use the light bulb as our universal symbol for inventive genius or that eureka moment. In fact, uh, not too long ago, a sociologist did a study that put uh, college students in a room, one room they had uh, incandescent light, the other had neon fluorescent lights. And the argument and the conclusion by this psychologist was that in the room with incandescent light, people acted more creatively and in intelligently. Whether that's true or not, that was the conclusion of, the, of this, uh, this study. And of course, we credit the invention uh, to Thomas Edison. As one historian put it, the light bulb was the greatest invention of the world's greatest inventor. And popular textbooks say things like this, a whole way of life had been revolutionized by one man's skill, insight, and enterprise. And that's the legend that we've inherited but the actual story of invention and the spread of electric light is both a lot more complicated and I think a lot more interesting. When we look more closely at how electric light was first invented and how it spread through our culture, we see that complex inventions are not created by a single genius, no matter how talented. In fact, Edison was in a race that was closely followed by the public uh, over the course of many years. Many others on both sides of the Atlantic claimed that, that he st actually stole their ideas. In Newcastle, uh, in England, for example, the British inventor, Joseph Swan, patented a light bulb and lit his own house almost a year before Edison unveiled his own system. When the first exposition of electric light was held in Paris in 1881, Edison was only one of a half dozen uh, inventors who were showing off their incandescent lighting systems. Edison emerged out of that competition in Paris uh, as the clear leader in a race to create uh, a viable electric light system. Others, like Joseph Swan, had invented working light bulbs ahead of Edison, but Edison had created an entire lighting system. He worked out practical solutions to a whole number of technical problems. We tend to think of the invention of the light bulb as a single thing, as that bulb itself, but of course that bulb is just the tip of the iceberg for a much more complicated system that delivers uh, current to that, that bulb and to many others at the same time. He had to create a, a more reliable light bulb. They burned out quite quickly and, and his was better than anybody else's in the Paris uh, uh, gathering. He also developed uh, a more efficient dynamo that provided a steady source of electrical power. And also the wires and the switches, the regulators needed to distribute that power across not just a home, but across entire city blocks. He even had to invent the meters uh, so that customers would know that they were being charged a proper amount for the amount of current that they were using. Edison, of course, it's important to remember, did not solve these problems on his own. Uh, he borrowed and improved on the ideas from his rival inventors. And he also depended on a team that he assembled at Menlo Park, New Jersey. These included skilled technicians and university trained mathematicians and chemists. Edison had himself only a, an elementary school education, uh, and he used to say that, that, that he didn't need college, uh, but when it came to assembling his team of workers, he relied on people with, with uh, expertise in all sorts of areas that he did not have. So Edison beat out the competition because he invented an entirely new approach to the invention process, the beginning of what we call modern research and development programs. In fact, many would suggest this was actually Edison's greatest invention, was to come up with a new way of invention. Edison was in charge of this. He, he uh, set the agenda for these collaborations, and he used the talents of these various people to uh, orchestrate them into a single intelligence in order to develop what he called an invention factory. And when he launched Menlo Park, uh, he said that he was going to come up with a minor invention every week and a major astonishing one every six months.